Hello, so today continuing on this B-weekly contest 15, um, the third problem, iterator for combinations. Um, so let's see what the problem um, asks us to do. So it's 1,286 iterator for combination. And the problem says we, we want to design an iterator class that has three things, a constructor. So iterators usually have just the constructor, next method, and has next. And in this method, the constructor the constructor has two parameters, a string of characters that are sorted in distinct lowercase English uh, or sorted order. They are distinct and they are lowercase English letters. And we have a number combination length also as an argument. And two, two other functions. Next, that returns the next combination of a specific length combination length um, and has next which returns true if and only if there exists uh, a next combination, right? And so we wanna, what we wanna do here is we wanna uh, create an iterator that for ABC gives us AB, AC, and BC. And so you could see here, it gives us AB, BC, and AC. So you could see it gives us the combinations in order, right? There is no CA, right? Because that's not in the right order, right? And so how can we um, how can we implement something like this? So right away combinations here, um, it's, it already tells us it's an iterator for combinations and that's exactly what it was um, and what it, what it asks us to do. So right away we should think about um, creating combinations, right? Because if you look here, the character's length is 15, right? But the problem is that next and has next may be called 10 to the power of four times. So next and has next needs to be really efficient, but the constructor initialization can be a little bit, can take a little bit more time, right? And so for to get combinations, we can just use backtrack, and that's the permutations and combinations and these kind of things that generate a list of choices. Um, we we can use backtrack to solve that. So um, let's see how we can s solve this problem. Um, so as we said, we well, as uh, we will uh, use backtracking to solve this problem, um, and then um, I have a video um, I will put in the description that explains um, in details how you can kind of a blueprint to solve backtracking problems, and that's what I will be using here. And um, for backtracking, essentially, what that video says is that you need to uh, find when, like, what is the partial solution that that you will pass around in your recursive function for backtracking. And we need to find, well, when, 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 does, that back, uh, when does that partial solution becomes a solution? Is a solution, how can you know that it's a solution so that you can just process it? And then what does processing the solution look like? And then at each point of um, of sol like at each partial solution, what are the candidates that you can go to next? And if you can come up with all of this, then maybe you could add some pruning for your backtracking solution, but essentially these are the main steps. And so what is our partial solution here? So what we want is generate combinations of characters. So for ABC, we want to generate combinations of length, let's say two, that's what the example says. So what do we need to do? So to generate combinations of length two of ABC, well, start with A, and so start with A first, and then add to it the next character, AB, or skip B and then do C, so AC. And then we also have BC, okay? But we want to do them in order. Or, or, sorry, here, pick B, and then um, pick A. You have to pick the next one. You can't pick the one before. That's the difference with permutation. And so we can only pick B, C. So this is the, um, the list that we have, right? And so with the order you can see is A, B first, and then A, C second, and then 3, B, C, right? And so here, for the order thing, that means that in our combinations, let's, let's say we are at a position I. And then when we move, we can only move to the positions after it. So our, or let's call it position index. So our for loop for the index in characters 
well it would be in the range starting from the position itself so that we can get that character and then you you only move to the next you don't go backwards because we want only those in order right and so all, all uh, already we know that we need we need to know what is our current partial solution so that we can append b to it so we need the s which is string so far right and we need the index in the current um, we need to know two things actually um, we need to know the index in the current character set right so index and this is index in current character set and we need to know also the um, index in the combination itself like this a is index 0 this b is index 1 so that we can know when we have a solution is when the length is equal to the length of the combination that we are asked we can also do length of s right um, actually let's do that so that we can reduce the, the state for ourselves but essentially this is all we need we need to know the index in the current characters so that we can only go so that we can process them in order and we need to know what s is and when do we have a solution well we have a solution when the length of s is equal to combination length that the problem asks us to uh, to follow right in this case when the length of the string is equal to 2 what is a processing a solution so the problem asks us to uh, to return every time when we call next we want to return the next um, the next uh, combination right so we could either have a list add them to a list and every time keep uh, keep track of the index so that every time we return the next in the order or the other thing we can do since next once you move next you can't move back so we don't need to keep track of the previous element we can just use Q and when we are asked next we can just pop the element and return it and so here our processing can be we initialize in the constructor we initialize a Q right first we initialize a Q and then here we can just pop from the front uh, here we can just sorry add add to the add to the uh, back of the list because the order has to be a b first a c first b c first so b c has to be in the back of the list so we append to the q um the the s the string right and then when we want to um, in the has in the next uh, call we can just call q dot pop left that will give us the front which means it will give us a b first and then a c and then b c now processing the candidates we said we have this for loop right so that we can um, get the right order so here that means we need to do a for i in the range of to get the next candidate character that we need to append and so index and then length of chars and what do we need to do we need to call our backtracking function again let's call it helper our backtracking function here so we need to call helper well, the new string, which is the partial state, we just chose this i to be added to it. So we do chars of i. And then what is the index of the next character to go to? Well, we have to advance the index by one so that we don't repeat the character itself multiple times. So index plus one. And that's pretty much it. That's all our um, backtracking solution needs. So now, let's try to code it. So let's just try to code the generate portion. The other thing, the other uh, portion is really easy to do. We'll do it on lead code. But the, the complete backtracking function for generating combinations in this case is, well, we will need to define our helper function that gets passed uh, S, which is the partial solution, and the current index in the character set. And we check if the partial solution became um, is, is a solution right now. So we check if the length of S is equal to um, the combination length. Then at that point, we can just append it to the Q. So the Q would be a variable on the class. So Q that append 
S, right? And then after that, we go through the candidates, right? We go through the candidates. So for I in range of index and length of character, we call the function again. And now since we chose the character position I, we'll do S plus and we need to go to the next um, next position in car, cars, and so I plus one, right? And then in the next call, we will skip the the one in, at position index, and we will pass in the one at index um, index plus one, which is in this case it would be uh, <coughs> doing AC, right? <coughs> and that's pretty much it. Um, now let's just take this, code it up with the full solution for the combination iterator. Um, okay, so now let's code this solution up. Um, so we already know the our generate function that we need to do, but here let's keep track of the characters we have that we have passed as parameters, and let's keep track of the combination length. And we will need to also have it de uh, define our our queue that we'll put elements in. So collections that queue, and we'll need to import collections here. And then we'll need to do gener do the helper function with backtracking so that we can uh, fill the queue with the all the combinations possible, right? And so that will be, as we said, the partial state s or the partial solution, and then the, in the current index that we are at in the character set. And so we define that function, the partial solution and the current index. And then we check if the length of, if we have a solution, so the length of S equal to If it is, then we add to the queue we process the solution, which is just adding it to the queue here. Otherwise, we or say return here. We go through the candidates uh, states. So in generate in helper of no sorry in the range of index. So we want to go from the current index all the way to the end because we want them in order um, length of characters, and then we call helper function again for the next state here and so that would be s plus what the character that we chose um, and then the um, and then the index of the next character to choose which is just i plus one sorry and that's pretty much it and for the next function well we could just as we said pop from the queue at, since pop from the front of the queue since the the smallest combination we add, we, would be would have been added first and so it would be at the front of the queue and so to pop it off we would do pop left but the problem is this will give us um, um, well let's see first what this will give us and then if it's wrong we will will it's part it, it definitely is wrong we will fix it so that we can see the error um, and then here um, we'll just check that self q is not empty. So we could do it by checking that, let's say the length is bigger than zero. Um, this will check that it's not empty, but we could also just convert this to a bool and it will be true if the list is not empty and it will be false if the list is empty. That's something in Python. Um, so let's see what next here will give us. Um, yeah, I need to say self here. Mm, this is self that shall get again. OK, 
Okay, so actually it's pretty good. It already passes because we just added it like this. So now we can just submit. Okay, so this solution passes. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, the other diff way we can use this is instead of I, I used like a, a function here to generate because it's good to get some practice with backtracking and in an interview also probably they won't let us use a library to do this. But in Python there is this um, library called import tool, iter tools, sorry, called iter tools that has this function called combinations where you could give it um, an iterable, an iterable, an iterable, so it can be even a list of characters and the length of the combination that you want and it will generate the combinations for you in the right order so essentially it will be doing this helper thing for us so if i use the example that we have um, abc2 um, and just convert it to a list you could see it give us pairs of them and so we could just join this and um, get the list that we want so we can just join x here and that will give us the strings that the combinations that we use the helper to generate. And so instead of generating it ourselves, we could just do this. So Q would be equal to um, so we could just pass, or we could actually for our Q here just pass. Since for a Q, if we look at if we import collections again. Um, so DQ also accept, I think it accepts an iterable. So let's just pass to the Q here, um, not this, pass to it the iterator combinations, right? And so here it would be the characters, right? And then the combinations like, so that's this. And we don't need to define this function here. The only thing we need is because the combinations returns to us a pair. Here, when we pop the first one, we need to join them so that we can give um, what the method expects back, right? And that's pretty much it. Um, the other solution, of course, is to not use a queue and then just keep track of the index and increment it yourselves, yourself, and that's also valid. Um, yeah. So we just want a fast way, really, I know of one way to get the next um, and the has the next one. That's all that matters, really. Um, and so let's submit this. Okay, so this also passes. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Um, thanks for watching and see you next time.